All right, what's up, Hot Squad? Welcome back. So, for the first time ever in my channel, I'm going to react to a Watch Mojo video. That's right. I'm going to watch a Watch Mojo vid. So, check out one of the lists. And, you know, I've been interested in seeing the list for the longest. You know, I've just never got a chance around it. So, this one is going to be called Top 20 Hardest Games in the Century. Of the Century. So, wow. Of the Century? Like, whoo. That's going, that's going to be uh, a hell of a list. So, um, I already see this, y'all. So, as always, sit back, relax, and we're going to check out Watch Mojo's top 20 hardest games of the century. So, comment and let me know what is the hardest game y'all have played. So, also, what we're to do, let's check it out. And now, our feature presentation. I am Melania, Blade of Mikola. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the yep. top 20 so hardest video games of the century. Cuphead. I have to play more Cuphead, though. <laughs> for this list, we'll be looking at the most difficult Super and challenging mm -hmm. video games released in the 21st century, so far at least. If there's a grueling modern game you want to grill us for not including, get good in the comments. Number 20. Kerbal Space Program. Never heard this game. Prime Division, 2015, okay. You know how people say that something's not difficult by saying it's not rocket science? Well, the Kerbal Space Program is essentially rocket science. Sure, it's done with goofy looking little green people called Kerbals, but the physics involved in getting them into orbit and performing tasks once they get there is surprisingly accurate. Mm. And that's what makes it so monumentally challenging. <clears throat> mm. If planning missions to space were easy, everyone would be doing it. Having to keep track of so many things to ensure success can be a demanding task. Chances are you'll crash, explode, spin out of control, or run out of fuel before you get it right. Mm. Number 19, Neo 2. Neo I have this game for free PS Plus, I haven't got a chance to play it yet. Set during a fantastical Sengoku era Japan, Neo 2 is one of many Souls-like games that take the action RPG combat and punishing difficulty of the games that inspired it and puts its own spin on it. Mm. Neo 2 has a steep learning curve, particularly in the beginning. Figuring out its various systems can be tough to do on the fly, and it includes new ways to make you oh tear your hair out by including features These like boss Dark Girls, which slows your key regeneration, adding an extra layer of headaches. <laughs> but fans of this style of games will find a lot to love, provided you don't mind being repeatedly freed from this mortal coil. <laughs> Number 18, Crash Bandicoot yes. 4, it's yes. about time. Yes, I beat this game New Year's Eve, I believe so. This was hard. Man, I almost rage quitted this game. The Crash Bandicoot games are known for having brutal, precision platforms. Yes. However, its newest game brought the series back with an even greater degree of difficulty. Yes. Just completing the base game is hard enough, with tough jumps and new powers and characters to utilize in achieving them. Cortex Castle alone has given the internet collective nightmares for how hard it is. I legitimately almost rage quit this game. Seriously. Almost. But players trying to smash every crate and discover every secret are in for a bad time. Still, at least all the death animations are fun to watch. Yeah. You'll certainly They're be fun. re watching them plenty of times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Number 17. God Hand. Never heard this. I don't think I heard this before. Okay. Clover Studio produced some truly unique masterpieces during its time, mm. but the developer was not exactly known for its especially hard titles. Mm. God Hand, their final release, is a notable exception. Mm. Ah, ah, ah. It's a goofy but irresistibly charming 3D beat-em-up with more than a hundred moves waiting to be unlocked and chained together. Mm. The gameplay is near perfect, but comes with a steep learning curve, mm. especially early on when Gene, the protagonist, only has access to a limited pool of attacks. 
The bosses are universally unforgiving, despite some of them being downright silly, hmm. while the less than ideal camera angles make dealing with groups a constant pain. Hmm. I'll help you out all right. Adam, <laughs> Number 16, Hollow Knight. I have this game. I get to continue it. Hollow Knight is a Souls-like Metroidvania set in a hauntingly beautiful world that you'll want to explore every inch of. Unfortunately, doing so takes a lot of trial and error. Hmm. Enemies, particularly bosses, are absolutely brutal, and battling against them can leave you feeling hollow yourself. Hmm. See you soon. But the moments between bosses can be just as difficult, since maps aren't always reliable and the platforming challenges can be equally deadly. Hmm. Anyone who has taken on the path of pain is sure to have gotten hand cramps at the very least. Don't get us wrong though, Hollow Knight is incredibly fun, hmm. and we can't wait for the sequel. Hmm. Yeah, so Song the sequel's called, it looks really good. Number 15, F-Zero F -Zero okay. GX. Never played it on GameCube. When it comes to challenging racing games, F-Zero GX is downright infamous. Mm -hmm. This futuristic racer seems designed to be as difficult to win as possible. The speeds involved are ridiculous, and each track is full of hairpin turns, forcing precision reactions, or you'll crash. Your boost meter is also your life bar, so boost too much and you're toast, but boost too little and you'll lose. And cheating AI? <laughs> you betcha. Why do they get unlimited boost? But if you can hone your skills as a racer, you'll experience one of the tightest, speediest racing games around. At least if you don't falcon punch your system out of frustration. Hmm. Number 14, Darkest, Darkest Dungeon. I've heard about this game. Merge games. Want to feel like the most incompetent leader of all time? then Darkest Dungeon is perfect for you. A turn-based RPG with leveling up, status effects, and team building, Darkest Dungeon's unique difficulty stems from the fact that permadeath is a thing. Mm. Rather than a fixed party, adventurers can be hired to explore maze-like maps filled with poisonous, fear-inducing, and just plain disturbing monsters. Mm. As the fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. The characters are also susceptible to paranoia and sickness, so preserving the team's morale becomes a crucial and often futile task. In later levels, enemies can feel downright unfair, especially when yet another character with dozens of hours of investment bites the dust. Hmm. Survival is a tenuous proposition. Number 13. Yeah, Celeste. Celeste. Yes. I've beaten this last year. Or not October. And man. Great game. Celeste is a game where the controls are polished to perfection, yet still requires precise skill from the player. Yep. Madeline must climb a mountain while avoiding spikes, timing mid-air dashes, evading horrifying enemies, and working against strong winds. Mm -hmm. And all of that is just the easy base game. Yeah. <laughs> If the players choose to take Spice on the more challenging B-side stages, get ready for a world of hurt as you try, Seriously. try, and try again to yes. get your jumps just exactly right. This was pain. Yet, this was the game difficulty doesn't end there. If you're truly determined, there's the absurd seaside stages yes. and the yes. ridiculously insane golden strawberry challenge. Yes. Hope that strawberry pie is worth it. This was a pain in the ass to get through. Like holy crap! But I love the game overall. I love it. Number 12, XCOM 2. Never played it. But I heard of it though. Building on the foundation established by 2012's Enemy Unknown, XCOM 2 is set after Earth has been invaded by aliens, with humanity's last hope resting on the shoulders of a grossly outnumbered resistance force. As a tactical RPG, XCOM 2 does a decent job of easing newcomers into the genre and the franchise. However, even Rookie Mode offers up a reasonable challenge. As the Resistance Force's commander, it's the player's job to select the right soldiers for each mission. And this is one of those games where death is not reversible. Hmm. The maps are also procedurally generated, so each playthrough provides new and exciting ways to mess up. Number 11, FTL, Faster Than Light. I'm not too familiar with this one. Subset games, yeah, I'm not too familiar with it. 
Roguelike games usually feature a high difficulty curve, which is what gives them longevity, since you often have to start over from the beginning. Combining the genre with a real-time strategy management of a spaceship and its crew, FTL Faster Than Light can lead to frustration at the same speed as its title. Keeping track of all the systems, especially during combat, can feel impossible, particularly for beginners. You'll die and die again, and each <laughs> run is different, so Excuse it's me. not as much a learning curve as it is a learning pretzel. Hmm. Number 10, Ikaruga. Don't think you're this one either. Sago, okay. As one of the most highly regarded additions to the genre, Ikaruga has done a lot to cement Shoot'em Up's reputation as being mainly for the hardcore crowd. Mm. I definitely see that, Jesus, this looks crazy. God. Twitch reflexes are obviously crucial, but Ikaruga sets itself apart due to the mechanic that permits the main ship to switch polarity between black and white, oh providing immunity to the same colored enemies. So in addition to the sense of immediacy typical of shoot 'em ups Ikaruga throws in an element of strategy. Mm. Number 9. Elder Ring, yeah. Elder yeah. Ring, yes. Definitely Elder Ring. From Software games are notoriously difficult, but while Elden Ring is on the easier side compared to its peers, it's still no cakewalk. Its open-world mm -hmm. design can it's make not. progression less frustrating, since you can just go somewhere else if you run into a problem you can't overcome. But its lack of hand-holding also means it's easy to miss crucial details easily. By the way, I've beaten this months ago. And despite exploits and certain overpowered builds, Elden Ring is no less forgiving. You'll still get rocked if you aren't careful, yep. and no amount of cheesing is going to make us forget the trauma inflicted on us by bosses like Malaket or Melina. Yes, yes, Melina, yes, oh my god. Yo. Of this took me almost like three hours to beat her. Number 8. Cuphead. Cuphead. I have yet to play more Cuphead. Ignore the mesmerizing visuals harkening back to classic cartoons, the cutesy protagonist, and awesome soundtrack. Cuphead mm. is a soul-crushing run-and-gun platformer that also happens to be one big boss rush. Mm -hmm. Even though some opponents are slightly more manageable than others, every boss goes through numerous phases, with each one being exceptionally harder than the last. I haven't gotten this far yet, but yeah, Cuphead is pretty hard. It is. Jeez. Failure is to be expected, as memorizing a boss's often complicated attack pattern is vital to standing any hope of victory. Yeah. Cuphead will have each and every single player begging to make a deal with the devil to finally get past King Dice or Dr. Call's robot. Hmm. Number 7. Bloodborne. Bloodborne. I have yet to play this. I know I missed out on Bloodborne PS4, trust me. I missed out. Another from software Eldritch Nightmare, Bloodborne has its own set of difficulties to set it apart. Along with its gothic horror aesthetic, Bloodborne encourages an aggressive playstyle, rewarding you for dodging, countering, and striking from behind. Some key items, like healing blood vials or silver bullets, don't come back after you die, which is horrendous when you're fighting a tough boss, of which there are, of course, many. Hmm. I'm curious what's number one. I'm curious. Damn. Damn. Speaking of which, God you day, man. them to put lamps closer to the bosses, and that opening level makes for a steep learning curve. Hmm. Not leveling up until you fight the first boss? Sheesh. Very sorry. The incense must have masked your sin. Hmm. Good. Good. I've been waiting for one of your ilk. Number six. Super, Super Meat Boy, Meat yeah. Boy. Super Meat Boy. I play this back on PS4 and man. This was a hell a game of a game. That literally throws players into the meat grinder, Super Meat Boy is a throwback to NES era platformers where a high difficulty was used to prolong an otherwise short campaign. Mm. The only difference is, Super Meat Boy has around 300 levels, pitch perfect controls, and never feels cheap. Sheesh, man. Whew. Also, it's arguably harder than most NES games. Hmm. Playing as a cube of meat trying to survive level after level riddled with blades, salt, and various other obstacles, Super Meat Boy rarely gives you the chance to catch your breath and feel comfortable. 
In fact, a split second tends to be the difference between your character and an unidentifiable red stain. Hmm. Number 5. Geometry Dash I don't think I played this. I heard of it, but I never played it. It hurts so hard, if though. If we were counting user-created levels, Geometry Dash would be a contender for the top spot on our list. But even the base game of this musical platformer runner makes us want to dash our heads against something. Each level propels you through a brightly colored musical platforming gauntlet, and if you hit something, you die and have to start over. Mm, sounds like a pain in the ass. While you only use one button to jump, various portals can switch up elements of the environment, which can either help you or leave you more confused and frustrated. Hmm. Practice makes perfect, but you'll have to practice a lot to get anywhere close to perfect in Geometry Dash. Hmm. Number 4. Getting over it with Bennett Foddy. Oh, I've For seen a lot now, of people less have been predicting of that games would soon be made out of prefabricated objects bought in a store, and assembled into a world. Hmm. We'll never get over how hard this game is. Getting over it is simple, if bizarre, in concept. You're a dude stuck this in a like pot trying to get up a mountain using a sledgehammer. But this is made monumentally difficult by the intentionally unintuitive controls and the fact that if you fall down, you have to start all over Jeez, again. Man. No checkpoints. No There's checkpoints? No what? Are you serious? The sheer infuriating rage this game induces is remarkable, as hours of progress can be undone in an instant. And Bennett Foddy's running philosophical commentary certainly doesn't help either. Honestly, it's probably more fun watching people play Getting Over It than it is to play it, yeah. if only for the Schordenfeld. There's no way left to go but up, and in a moment I'll shut up. But let <laughs> me say, I'm glad you came. Uh, Number 3, Ninja Gaiden. Ninja Gaiden. I miss out Ninja Gaiden. No checkpoints on, no, on a game is crazy. Nintendo's early library is packed with notoriously rage-inducing games, but even so, Ninja Gaiden remains a standout. Mm. In the 3D reboot, Team Ninja successfully captures the spirit of the original trilogy, mm. so much so that 2004's Ninja Gaiden may just be the hardest entry in the franchise. Mm. Damn. Right from the opening level, enemies spawn from everywhere and show absolutely no mercy. Ninja Gaiden wastes little time in allowing players to become familiar with the mechanics. Ryu is by no means an underpowered protagonist, but Ninja Gaiden punishes every single mistake, and even fodder opponents are not to be taken lightly. Hmm. Number 2. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice I have yet to try this game out. Damn. Challenging beyond measure, Sekiro takes the cake by denying the players the possibility to grind endlessly or switch to a different playstyle compared to its soul's brethren. You either learn how to parry or embrace defeat. Mm. Damn. Since you're playing as a master shinobi, stealth is a viable option and it's oh so for the like encounters. However, bosses, and even mini-bosses, hit hard, fast, and relentlessly. Mm. The base game is so crushingly difficult, there is barely any point mentioning the Demon Bell that serves as a harder mode. Ooh. Damn. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Mm. Enter the Gungeon. All the fun guns and cool enemies almost make you forget how brutal the game is. Almost. I heard about this game. Spelunky. It's a monkey, Each okay. run is unique and uniquely frustrating. I heard about Spelunky. I heard about it. Don't you got a sequel to it too? Mega Man 9. Mm. A retro revival that brought Nintendo hard to a new decade. Hmm. I'm just playing Mega Man. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Dark Souls 2. Okay. Okay, Dark Souls 2. Never played Dark Souls. 
Picking the hardest Souls game can be a challenge. Each has their own unique hurdles that has helped make this series a byword for difficulty in the gaming industry. But, with all due respect to Demon Souls, Dark Souls, and Dark Souls 3, mm. we're going with Dark Souls 2. Mm. Damn. Its level design is arguably the most frustrating and punishing, with regular enemies often swarming you, not to mention the usual brutally tough boss fights. Then there's the fact that you often heal so slowly that you get hit again anyway. Dang. Oh, and your max health is reduced every God time you die. Wow. The fact that creator Hidetaka Miyazaki didn't direct this one may explain the greater than average brutality. Wow, dude. That health damage is crazy. Damn. In the mood for more hmm. awesome Oh, wow. That was a pretty good list, I gotta admit. Wow, that was a pretty damn good list. Like I said, some of the games in this list I played and beaten, some of them I'm continuing playing. And, dang, man. <laughs> How about, come on, let me know what's your, what's, what hardest games you played in the um, in this century. Or really of all time. So, yeah. Great video, Mo Watch Mojo. Great video. I'm going to react to more Watch Mo Watch Mojo vids as well. Not bad for first time, too, right? Not bad. So, all squad, there you have it. That was my reaction to Watch Mojo's 20th, yeah, 20 hardest games of the century. So, hell of a list, man. Hell of a list. Some games I've played, some games I've never heard of, some games I've beaten. So, basically, yeah. Yes, yes, indeed. So, I actually enjoyed it. I actually quite enjoyed this. I will do more Watch Mojo reactions for sure, but I just want to find out the, the good videos. Comment, let me know which, which um, reactions y'all want me to react to for Watch Mojo, you know, for the whole of it. So, I'll squat. This is Taurus Talk Sound for today. If you enjoyed my reactions to all three of my videos, my reactions did today, please hit up the button, comment, and share your thoughts. You know, like I said before, what is the hardest games y'all played throughout y'all lives, you know? And overall, yeah, solid list for for real, solid list. So once again, Hot Squad, this is Hard Salt Sign for today. I will see y'all hopefully this weekend or next week for more reactions. And as always, safe out the sky, peace out, and have a great day. I'll see y'all later.